to Bill Flynn in the morning. Good morning. It's the uh, Love Your Lawn Hour this morning, and with Growing Green and the website growinggreen.com. We have with us agronomist Tommy Cowie. Good morning, Tommy. Good morning, Bill. Have you you look like a guy that's been pretty busy since I last saw you a week ago. Oh, we have been very busy. We're still just a million miles an hour. Well, I, somehow it seems like you're keeping pace with it, though. It's not getting away from you, but you're staying real busy. What are, what are the things right now homeowners are, are uh, looking for, concerned about, you guys are working toward? What are the elements right now on that window? Right now, we're seeing a lot of insect activity. Mm. Insects are waking up right now. And I think somebody had definitely called into the uh, Ask the Expert um, on the website mm-hmm. yesterday uh, inquiring about doing an insecticide application. And it is now a good time to do it. And it is. It's a very good time. The, now, uh, what about the targeting grubs? Now, there's some insects that I don't, I'm asking. I know, like, for instance, snakes. There are some snakes you want around, like a black snake. Sure. Okay, you know, because they're going to take care of little things that you don't want to have to take care of. But it doesn't mean you want, you know, water moccasins or diamondbacks around the house, of course. <laughs> are there some insects that you say, this is where we want to make sure they're okay, but we don't want the pests? Right. We want to control the uh, beetle grub. Because that will damage your lawn. It will actually eat the roots and feed on the plant and rip your lawn up. Pretty what much. happens when a when the roots are eaten from below to the plant? Well, the plant typically wilts in a large area. If you have a heavy population, mm-hmm. usually that's uh, the threshold there maybe for treating would be, you know, or for damage. Would you, You'll see if you have about a dozen, about 12 per square foot. One per inch. That's a heavy infestation. Really? But just a few yeah. grubs in a square foot of soil uh, can tear up a lawn. You know? So how would I, I mean, is it start to, uh, um, it starts to wilt? Is it changing color? What's happening yes, to the lawn? Yes, it will wilt. It will change color. It'll go off color. Um, you'll, you know, the area will definitely be under a lot of stress. And we typically go out if we suspect that it's grub damage. And we can dig up a square foot of soil and see what we have there. Mm-hmm. And within the first inch of soil right now, you'll find the grubs. So they're only about an inch deep, but that's plenty yep. of room for them to, I mean, they're just, they're, it's like the endless buffet to them if they're eating the roots. Oh, yeah. Everywhere they go. They're and they're, dining. they're large. They're about to molt and become adult beetles. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, they'll fly and they'll be around mating and make it back into the soil in july august and lay eggs and then those eggs will hatch and And they'll ask for next season for next season exactly they go deep into the soil over winter Mm -hmm. and now they're up now they're up they're on the top so once the uh once the roots have been uh, eaten away i mean if you eradicate the problem will they will the roots grow back if you get rid of those uh those grub or those beetles yes immediately Right. You want to put a stop to the damage that they're causing. You want to really eliminate them. Mm-hmm. It's a good time to to uh, treat with an insecticide to kill mm-hmm. the the grub worms. Okay. And on this topic, too, you know, we have uh, so much invested of time and effort and just, you know, with our, with our lawns and our surrounding areas. And you want to be out there and you want to enjoy it. We're coming into that humid mosquitoy season that oh, you can yeah. have a gorgeous yard and a perfect deck and the, all the right friends coming over and you're enjoying life but you know the gnats are buzzing or the the mosquitoes are driving you crazy they are hey i had to empty out a bird bath at my house last night it was just loaded with uh mosquito mm. Mm. so it was you know you got to get cleaned it out of course refilled it but you know you got to keep on top of any standing water that you might have in your yard uh, for good control. Now, when we come out to do a treatment for mosquitoes, we treat the areas where they're harboring. You know, the grass, they're definitely in the in the lawn. They're in the shrubbery. They're resting during the day. And uh, we treat, we pretty much do a contact treatment on where they are harboring. So you know, growing downspouts and cracks and curbs and things like so that. Growing green is going to be able to uh, handle if you want them to. 
uh, the pests that are bother- that are biting you, keeping you from enjoying your your lawn, and also the pests that are you don't see but are taking away the very lawn you want to spend more time at. Right? Sure, I mean this treatment when you get a uh, grub control, we're targeting the grub, but mm-hmm. with with the grub control product, the insect for the lawn, uh, that also picks up a lot of your occasional invaders. They're known as in professional terms, and that mm-hmm. would be. Oh, ants, crickets, so, sow bugs, oh, everything, earwigs, anything that might be out there. Um, I'm laughing when you said earwigs. I've actually had an ear. They actually fly in your ear. Do you know that? I oh, mean, yeah. <laughs> and one time, my wife opened up the back door, and I was reclined at the moment, and this, this earwig flew in and made a... <laughs> And I was going to say bee line, but made an earwig line directly into my ear, crawled in and was happy. <laughs> and talk about something to drive you crazy. Man, those are some strange looking bugs. They are. Tail and I said, and something's in my, she, it happened so fast. She didn't, she knew it flew in, but she didn't see it. Man. And I said, it, it's, it's in here. And she said, well, let me look. Get it out. She said, well, I don't see anything. It's tweezers. It's like, <laughs> it's in there. I know it's in there. And you, you feel like it's going to eat your brain because... You right. Know. It's after your brain. <laughs> <laughs> so she she had trouble believing me. I said, no, it's in there. It's crawling. I can feel him crawling around. My God, Bill. I mean, it was like that big. Attacked by an earwig. So we went to the, you know, the, uh, uh, the quick uh, medic place nearby. It went that far deep in Could not get it out. My she God. couldn't see it. She, and she we put some wash in there. And... Uh, and what she said was, <clears throat> she was she was convinced I had flipped out. She was, he's got a bug in. So we ear. went there, <laughs> and she said it this way: He says he's got a bug in his ear. <laughs> like I don't really believe him, but I love it. I said, <laughs> and the nurse looked in there. She didn't see anything, and and Anne's like, uh huh, yeah, it's in there. Yeah, as happy he says as a it. bug in a rug. And finally, the physician came in and said, "Oh, I see him now." So ah. I. I held on to that bug as evidence of uh, my belief system. But th- th- anyway, just to show you, one of these insects can be a uh, can be a U-turn in your life you're really not looking for. <laughs> right now, you're seeing a lot of insect activity. If you just go out in any typical lawn, you're going to see little mounds. Yes, uh, yes. Some of the things, those are, a lot of that is ant activity. But what you'll also see a lot of for just a short period of time are these ground bees. Now, these are good guys. They're uh, Typically, they won't be affected by these applications that I've seen when we do them. We really, that is their little home. They're uh, the bee, the ground bee. It is a type of bee. It typically won't sting anybody. I mean, you do okay. see them darting around. Interesting. All right. Um, well, take, they, we're going to take a short break and come back and finish up our discussion of uh, insects and pests and more with the Love Your Lawn Hour Growing Green. The website growinggreen.com and our guest this morning, Tommy Cowett. We'll be back in just a moment. Call now. The number is 896 1980 AM 980 The Eagle. Good morning. It is the Love Your Lawn Hour with Growing Green. And let me encourage you to uh, call the folks at Growing Green. 1 866 Lawn Help is the phone number. 1 866 Lawn Help, H E L P. Uh, you've also got the 8547999 number, which may be as easy to remember. The website growinggreen.com with a really great tab on there called Ask the Expert. And you do not have to be a, uh, a client of Growing Green to really benefit from either asking the question or reading an answer to a question that has been asked by somebody else because we tend to face a lot of the same issues sure. as homeowners and people trying to enjoy our lawns and this part of the country. Uh, we were finishing up the discussion about insects. You talked about ground bees, which honestly, I'd never heard of them before, but they're bees that live and, and burrow into the ground. They'll and- make a little nest and lay mm-hmm. eggs, right? Okay. And they are good pollinators. All bees are. Mm-hmm. They don't sting. Uh, we I consider them a beneficial. Uh, the treatment typically doesn't get them. They're more out and about. They're mm-hmm. They're just making that little hole in the ground to lay some eggs in. And we typically, 
I, you know, it's it's not an effective control for them, but I, I don't care if they live or I want them. Mm-hmm. I want yep. pollinators out there. And you were also talking about the ant population, which has really exploded in the last uh, week or two here. I know, you know, for instance, if I'm edging the lawn, mm-hmm. they love to put their little red mounds or whatever in that area between the sidewalk and the edge of the lawn is a real primo place for them. Sure. Or in the even in the seam of the uh, driveway, you'll find these overnight oh, yeah. mound of uh, significant size mound of, of ant activity. Lots going on with them. That's right. And that's more of an exterminator job, a PCO, a pest control operator, someone who's controlling ants around the foundation of your home, a structural treatment. But when we treat a lawn, you know, those are the little foraging ants. They're going to make their way out into the lawn, and some of them are going to die from the uh, treatment. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's really a clean up. You're really making your lawn and home a lot more sanitized when you treat that lawn with insecticide. Now, for instance, yesterday I, I had a lawn treatment. Uh, was it Kevin that came out to the house? I believe was the technician's name. I know yep. we've talked before. And he... Um, He's he's going out there and he's got this sprayer going, okay. All right, and and then I, I ask you, what's in that? You know, is it is it tuned specifically to this this procedure, this time of year, this application? And your answer was yes. So tell yes. me what's going on with it. You're getting around here at this time of year that consists of your regular lawn application. You're getting the organic matter. You're getting the uh, mm-hmm. compost tea, the stuff okay. that is. Uh, uh, Really delicious to the lawn. Right. It contains the living microorganisms, fertilizer, Mm -hmm. iron, calcium, sulfur. It's just a great tonic for the lawn. It keeps the lawn really happy and healthy. So that's just one of the items going on. And that's already pre-mixed with everything you just said. And it contains herbicides. Mm Pre-emergent, which will prevent any crabgrass and a lot of other broadleaf and grassy weeds from germinating in your lawn. Beautiful. Like you're protected yeah. from your neighbor who hasn't done anything. There won't be any invasion in your yard. We're putting down a barrier mm-hmm. to prevent anything from coming up. So that's so guaranteed. That's one of the tanks. It's, how many tanks are on this truck? Four tanks are on the truck. Okay, so you just talked about one of, one of all them. of those different and things that in is, it. That's your regular lawn okay. treatment. Gotcha. Now, we're coming into brown patch season. So you're on fungicide program. And it's a preventative fungicide program to prevent you from ever seeing any blemishes from brown patch. But it also picks up other diseases Mm -hmm. that may come. Brown patch is the primary disease of tall fescue in this area in the summer. Now tell me what's going on with brown patch. What's actually happening to the plant? And why is it so, um, why are we so susceptible at this time of year and in this part of the country? Just last night, if you heard those thunder booms, Mm -hmm. maybe it came through your area. Um, you know, nighttime air temperatures aren't getting down below 60. Okay. We're starting to get humid and Mm -hmm. that is a favorable condition for the, uh, brown patch fungus, which is called Rhizoctonia solani. And what is happening here is, uh, you have a disease triangle here. You've got a susceptible host, which is tall fescue. Mm -hmm. You have a pathogen. Now, to make that triangle complete, all you need is the ideal favorable condition, and that is humid, wet, hot, you know, this type of thing, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then brown patch can strike and, you know, start to affect Now, what about folks that uh, either have lawn irrigation or are really into watering their lawns? I mean, does that enhance the problem potentially it could but typically a person with an irrigation system is always told to water early in the morning you know that way say the sprinkler system comes on at 6 5 a.m 6 a.m and is watered for 30 minutes a zone and then what happens is that you know sun comes out and dries off quickly and then the mm-hmm. then the lawns dry all day. So you uh, you yeah. want the, uh, the the lawn to be saturated down at the soil level, but you right. don't want it you want lingering re- with the moisture at the at the top where the, the 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 grass is going to be suffering potentially this this issue. Right. In a nutshell, just reduce prolonged leaf wetness. That's uh, what you want to do is keep that turf not wet for a prolonged period of so time. So the best time is early in the morning, but what's the worst time then? Probably at night. After, after sunset, it's sure. going to be uh, all Water night. at night, uh, okay. you're looking at setting yourself up for some fungus. 
Okay. Oh well, yeah, that's good to know. All right, so we've talked two of the different tanks on the tank on the tanker truck. This got okay. four tanks. Fun what? sides and the regular lawn okay. treatments, and, and then big- the okay. third one you got, and mm-hmm. the, he had the ability of doing all three at the same time. Was the insecticide. And that's primarily for the grubs, which are out there now, very active. And uh, so that's, he was able to apply three different treatments at the same time to your lawn yesterday. And, uh, and the, uh, the mixture of, of that is really precise, it isn't is. it? Yeah, so we go out, he was applying that application. He's mm-hmm. got a good technique. He's been trained. He's calibrated. We put out uh, two gallons of water per thousand mm-hmm. square feet or two gallons of liquid Mm -hmm. and everything's really beautifully mixed together. It's got all the good organic matter in there. The uh, microorganisms are all happy. They were, Mm -hmm. you know, they're going out into, to be introduced uh, to the plant and they will recognize that plant. They will know, yes, this is what I need. I need the sugar from this plant. And in conjunction together with mother nature working Mm. you got it you know you got the perfect ideal uh what we're doing the combination of the plant and the microbe that's why we call it the love your lawn hour because there is at the end of that day there's some love going on in that lawn that makes it better growing green we'll be back with tommy cout and more on em 980 the eagle Call now. The number is 896-1980 am 980 the eagle Good morning. It's 936, 24 minutes till 10 o'clock. Bill Flynn this morning with our uh, in-house guest, the Love Your Lawn Hour, Tommy Cowett. Good morning. Green. Good morning, Tommy. And uh, as a a certified registered agronomist, somebody who's been uh, to college level courses, and you do a lot of continuing education too of the new products and maybe even some new variations on disease that are coming out this is always a moving target i think it's fascinating it absolutely is chuck and i will spend the afternoon today with a gentleman patrick anderson who is kind of famous uh nationwide with uh rainbow tree care and we'll be uh doing some ipm training with him that's integrative pest management Ooh. training and he's going to open up our eyes to things we've never seen we don't know about so I'm excited. Well, it's it's almost refreshing to hear you as somebody who spends uh, so much of your time in your professional life uh, involved in these issues. Some of the things that are new to you, for the average homeowner, it may as well be on another planet. And they don't really <laughs> care. They want someone who's knowledgeable to take care of it for them. That's right. Half the time, you know. And Unless I'll... you're wanting to go to all these seminars all the time. Sure. Uh, now, we like do have know. customers who are very uh, dangerous when it comes to you know <laughs> hey you know i want to meet you on the lawn let's talk about this you know <laughs> the particular type of particular customer mm-hmm. who is studied i mean i've i've got some wonderful customers who just sign up for our fungicide program and they've been through foresight tech's horticulture program you know so they've wow. they already know you mm-hmm. know a lot of the stuff and uh it's really great cuz they could test their knowledge on me and you know i'm kind of put on not on the spot but right you know we can really share some of this uh knowledge that we have because i'll learn from a person like that really quickly well the interesting thing too though there's the uh, you know the book knowledge the clinical mixture levels and uh you know plant analysis but there's also that real life day-to-day experience Seeing in this part believing. of the country seeing which- is believing type of thing you know where you're out looking mm-hmm. and you see what's going on out here uh, it almost reminds me. I had a uh, uh, have a friend that worked at uh, at uh, a trucking company, and he was a dri- a test driver, <clears throat> and he would go out there, and the engineers would say, "Okay, this is going to work. We've made this new item," and they'd make a you know prototype, and he would go out there, and my friend would drive you know hours and hours in rough conditions, putting the test on this, and the engineers would say it's going to work perfectly because they've done all the math, right? Sure, they did the math, but the truck driver could say. <laughs> You might have done some math. <laughs> you might have done some math I don't understand, but I can tell you right now, that's going to break, and I'll show you where it's going to break. It's not going to work. So it's a comedy. <laughs> and many times the truck driver would have been right because right. of his wor- you know, real-world experience. But really, Growing Green brings together that cutting-edge knowledge and you know people from this area that have been watching conditions change 
in this in this particular market in this particular microclimate that makes all the difference doesn't it sure i mean we're here we're local we've seen these things for years i mean i have 30 years experience in this business wow and uh there's a number of other john the commander chuck chad scott we you know and then our techs those you know the combined is well over a hundred years of combined. Well, and the, the tech that you're talking about, the technician, many times is the face of growing green that the cu- only face a customer will see, because they don't get to see everything else going on. I mean, when you your technicians at the house, that's that's your guy, that's your billboard in that sense. He's the man, you know. Who at whichever one of you have, and they're all good, and you know we're all in contact with them daily. I mean, you were mentioning that. I guess uh, Kevin had his headphones in, and you're thinking, oh, that guy's listening to music. He's mm-hmm. not. He's talking on the phone. Oh, is he? On headphones, yeah. He's talking on these little Galaxy S5 bad phones we got. So, They're awesome. If you know? I were to monitor the conversation, what is he talking about? Do the other technicians? He could be talking the... to me about a particular insect, disease, ah, okay. whatever. You know, what was in the mix? How about this weed? I can't get mm. rid of this wild carrot. What are we going to do about it? Or uh, if the technician sees something, can he take a photograph and Absolutely. Uh, send it to you? And shoots it right to me. Uh, I get I those you. all day long. If mm-hmm. you look at my text messages here, um, you know, hey, what is this? Have you seen this before? You know, and we're mm-hmm. constantly all communicating. That's a wonderful thing about what it the is way amazing. we're set up right now. Uh, we use the Android because it it coincides really well with um, the software programs we use for account management. You know. Um, where we have, you know, you're in our system. We can see what you're signed up for. You know, we know when we need to be treating you. We see what treatments. The notes are all entered in on what he saw on your lawn yesterday. He took notes. What he saw on that lawn on that day, and you got a record of that. That's right, and he left you. He should have left you a nice little detailed kind of report, a message. Uh, If he pointed out, did he mention the black snake? Uh, <laughs> it, I, I did not uh, see that on the final report, but uh, there was a little black snake that showed up in the yard yesterday during treatment time. It's like, I'm over here, leave me alone kind of thing. Yeah, those are kind of fun yeah. things to come across. Yeah. You know? Now, you told me, uh, uh, as you're observing things, you, you mentioned that the other day you noticed even some golf courses in this area were having some s- signs of stress. What Even at a golf course level, what's showing up? Oh, my God. Bermuda grass took a hit, guys. Turf Commander last night uh, mm-hmm. put together a nice letter that went out to all the athletic directors and coaches in the market that we deal with, letting them know that you know we've been out to look at these fields already, preliminary. And now that the Bermuda's finally waking up, let's hope it wakes up more. Mm-hmm. Some of it's already up, but we've lost a considerable amount of Bermuda grass over the winter from winter injury, winter kill, and spring dead spot. Now, what you're saying to some folks, though, I have a friend that was trying to stamp out Bermuda grass in his lawn. Is music to his ears? I'm sure it is because <laughs> he was fighting it for so long. Uh, but the season has been particularly rough on the Bermuda grass. Oh yeah, on fields, yeah. Um, typically where they've had to play. You know, and believe me, an athletic field like a football field, soccer field, lacrosse field, field hockey, they get trampled all winter long. We have a short window now. To get them back. Typically, we have three months from the time the kids leave for the summer till about the time they get back. We've got to grow that Bermuda grass back. So with this deficit, what can you do to begin to balance out? Some- In a lot of cases, we'll be sodding. And we just hope we can get sod because sod is going to be in short supply. That's is that like the final solution? Sodding if you can't do anything. Else Sodding, like sprigging, seeding yeah. work. You know right. that, that yeah. we take it on a case by case basis. All right, tell you what, we'll be back with our final segment of the Love Your Lawn Hour, and we have with us from uh, Growing Green, Tommy Cowett. The uh, website is growinggreen.com. A lot of questions getting answered there, and the uh, phone number one eight six six Lawn Help. Call now. The number is 896-1980. AM 980, The Eagle. Good morning. It's the Love Your Lawn Hour. And uh, we're delighted to have with us from Growing Green, uh, Tommy Cowett, the agronomist there, and our 
Turf Commander Jonathan Rigsby, who sometimes joins us on the program, has um, really put out a, a note to folks that are depending upon Bermuda grass, a lot of fields in this area, athletic fields. Uh, Bermuda grass is is the lifeblood of, if it's not there, they don't have a field. That's correct. That's how important it is. And there's been kind of a, just a warning out there that says, uh, you know, Bermuda grass is, is really taking a hit. I asked the question off mic, and I think your answer was very interesting. Um, is, is it true that fescue loves the conditions that Bermuda grass hates almost in reverse? It is an opposite. Yes, it is. There's cool season and warm season mm-hmm. grasses. However, you can get them to, to grow together, and we call that a transitional lawn. If you, you know, if you have the Bermuda, we can eradicate it. We can take that out. Uh, if you're interested, it's a little investment. It, you know, it has a price tag because mm-hmm. the chemical is specific and it's expensive. But it will remove the Bermuda grass from the fescue, and that has to be done when that Bermuda is actively growing in the summertime. I see. Okay. And vice versa. So we take uh, out the cool season in the winter, and we p- typically do that with some chemicals that are a little cheaper, like Roundup on dormant Bermuda, and you can mm-hmm. take it out. Mm-hmm. So reverse. It's a lot easier to take. I think it's a lot easier to take. Uh, actually, it's about even. But they are opposites. Mm-hmm. Now, when you see a story, for instance, like out of California, where the governor of California says, essentially, dictates, you're going to have to let your lawn die, people, because... <laughs> you're not know, watering it, right. No water allowed, and, and the significant investment so many people have in their lawns. And this is no indication that it's going to happen here. Seven, some years ago, Greensboro was having a water shortage, oh, but... we did. Uh, you remember that probably better oh. than about anybody. Oh, yeah. I felt the pain of that one, boy. I mean... Uh, Washing cars was even called into question, whatever. Yes. At the time, I was uh, running a small landscape gardening business. and uh, Oh, you felt? I was like a, it felt like being an outlaw <laughs> to be caught with a garden hose. I'm serious. It was that bad. Well, there are people out in Sneaking California. Sneaking around at night trying to water your plants. Oh, yeah. And you can get reported and fined. and uh, 250 starting fine and then 500 for the second offense. And then it could go, I, I believe I saw one where a guy was fined $1,500. Mm. But the, uh, the, the truth of it is the healthier the lawn, I mean, long-term drought, nothing's going to survive that. I understand, or very little. But um, the healthier the lawn, the more it can absorb these momentary stresses whether you talked about the insecticides or the fungicides or even the uh if we've had more water or less water than we normally do nature has a way of mixing it up for us and we've learned a lot from mother nature i mean if it wasn't for these drought that we went through we wouldn't have the technology we have today really? that we experimented with back in those days to get through those tough times you learn and we learned that by using the compost teas, by using the humic acids, by using, you know, the microorganisms in the lawn, you're going to build thick, healthy root systems where they're going to be a lot less, you know, drought stressed, uh, say if they go into a heat spell or drought. Mm-hmm. We're not going to go into stresses as quickly. And the, the lawn will typically just shut down, go dormant, but as soon as conditions become ideal again, it'll be fine. You know, just gonna... how long does it take to wake up? I mean, can it be a, really a matter of days or hours for a lawn to once it's gone dormant to snap back when the conditions are right? I could imagine a day or two that That's you fast. could rehydrate that mm-hmm. lawn and get it woken up. I don't All right. Know, after, I typically let my lawn go dry in the summertime, you know, and let it go completely dormant. And it's very healthy. Uh, doesn't look bad. It's nicely cut, and keeping that four inch height always helps. You were uh, telling me that uh, you <laughs> you have a a situation a, a, a neighbor to somebody you know, and you, you were talking about the grass height cut and the fact that you've got a growing green ruler. Yeah, we do. I haven't seen one of those. You got to find me one of those. I'll give you one. Um, we have a bunch of them. We give them out of trade shows, but it's just a six-inch ruler that has the uh, ideal hud- uh, cutting heights for tall fescue and Bermuda on them. 
And I just stuck one in my uh, mom's neighbor's yard the other night because he's mowing that fescue at two inches. It's, it kind of hurts you. It, it breaks your heart, doesn't it? Well, it's it just, I mean, you compare the two lawns. And her lawn is nice and green, and his lawn looks scalped. Okay. Gray. And that's, you're talking about an inch and a half difference. Yeah. And it, of the mowing deck. Yeah, you could see. And you the, can see. Oh, you can see the difference. His thing, it's, it's, it's scalped. It's just like silver kind of look. It. You know, it's uh, not green, you know, not mm. lush. Um, it, but your mom's is lush. Yeah. Now, does this neighbor know that you're the growing green guy? Well, it's funny. We were over uh, Sunday night for Mother's Day dinner, mm. and uh, I, I stuck the ruler right on the <laughs> property line there and just yeah. left it there. And then I went over <laughs> last night to mow her lawn, and it was yes. gone. So I figured Rich uh, found it. He found it. Yeah. Do you think that'll help him? Uh, Will he take the hint? I, to help I've talked to him about it before. I just yeah. we were kind of joking around, and I had that, and I said, "Well, I'm going to put it right." Well, he knows show him, yeah. you know, and he's yeah. real particular because he mows two, three times a week. <laughs> Sometimes now he's he's out there all the time, so you know, I mean, he's trying to. He spends a lot more time and inter energy and effort on that lawn mm -hmm. than we spend and, maintaining her lawn and you know it, and he's backwards that's yeah that's a very powerful point you know that you just mentioned because really for most homeowners we want minimal investment of time effort right and maximum opportunity to enjoy i mean because i i mean for me, cutting the grass is, is is a bit of a chore. It's a chore. It's something it I is. got to do, and uh, I don't hate it, but it's not my first thing. There are some people that I know live to cut grass, and, and God bless them, but Paris. I'm not one. Who's that? Paris Smith. Um, oh, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, he does. He loves that. We were just talking about mm -hmm. his lawn. But the, um, uh, the idea of being able to efficiently get things – done and working with nature and doing the four inch cut versus the two and a half or what have you it all uh it all accrues to essentially less outlay for the consumer and a greater level of enjoyment and and the beauty that you get sure i mean I, of course the inputs and the outputs should be you know equal i mean i want to get as or get more out of it than i put into yeah, it would be even better yeah. so you know um, we're just out there assisting Mother Nature. And it's not rocket science, but we're trying, you know. We're we're still, you know, trying to come up with that perfect formula. We'll always tweak this mix that we use. Mm -hmm. you know? It's always changing. Like David Heisig, one of our uh, commercial techs, you know, he's got to mix up special chemicals a lot of times We uh, for the commercial properties that we do. Now, what's going on in a with a commercial setting that would require – a highly specialized, you know, uh, mix that you otherwise would probably be the wrong thing to do for most it's, other laws. It's more about the customer. When you're dealing with a professional mm. customer, a commercial account, when you're dealing with, say, a landscape contractor that you're working for or a property management mm. firm, and they're pretty much educated already as to what we're doing, and they might, you know, they know mm. the issues, so we've got to address them specifically where, you know, more with the residential customer, mm -hmm. they're just really hiring us to take care of it, and they might not want to know about some of these things. But mm -hmm. the commercial, you do get a little more technical, you know, on the commercial end, even with the athletic fields. You know, it's a lot more technical. Than and uh, when you talk about technical, you also have, uh, you also have some real um, specifications that that field has got to meet in order to qualify for number one safety, right? Sure. Oh, um, yeah. And I'm I'm sure sanctioned events have to have certain field uh, qualities in order to be able to be a sanctioned event. Don't they? We mentioned the Stokesdale Athletic Park that we rescued from condemnation. It was condemned mm -hmm. by the North Carolina Youth Soccer Association due to a sedge infestation, and we got that cleaned up and got the. Wow. The fields opened back up for a big tournament last fall. Congratulations. So that worked good. All right, time is almost up here, but I want to make sure folks know it's Growing Green, a great place to go to the website, growinggreen.com, G-R-O-W-I-N-G, 
R E E N dot com. One eight six six Lawn Help. Tommy Count, good to see you as always. Great to see you, Bill. And it's the Love Your Lawn Hour, and we'll be back again next week with things you'll need to know at next week's show.